All right, so I'm going to start with the first worksheet. You should have in front of you a sheet that um, says phase changes at the very top of it. Um, we're going to take a look at the graph on the back side first. So go ahead, turn that over. On this graph, what we want to look at is what temperature do materials go through a phase change. So on this graph, we can see that we are looking at water. And on the y-axis, we have temperature, and on the x-axis, we have heat. So I'd like you to draw in the same things that I'm drawing into the uh, graph. So we start as a solid, and when we are in the solid state, our material is going to be very compact with its molecules. So it kind of looks like this. And I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to label this stage as being solid. So at this point, the temperature is increasing. We can see that our molecules are gaining energy here. And then the temperature stays the same for a while. And the reason that it stays the same is that the molecules are absorbing the energy in order to go from a solid to a liquid. So at this point, we call this our melting point. So this is when all the molecules are absorbing the energy. So that's why the temperature doesn't change. The molecules are actually going from the solid state here where they um, are very compact together to being able to kind of flow past one another as a liquid. Once the temperature starts to increase again, that tells us that the molecules are able to start absorbing energy again. So at this point right here, we're going to label that as a liquid. And so our molecules now can flow past one another. Then the temperature starts to even out again, and so we have another phase change going on. So at this point, the molecules are going from a liquid to a gas, and that's going to be the point where it is evaporating. So this is going to be evaporation. Once all of the molecules are in the gas form, then here is where the molecules are all in the gas form and they can start to increase in temperature again. So that means that when we see that evening out of temperature right here, that's going to tell us the melting temperature or the freezing temperature if we were going the opposite way of the material. And then the other even point right here, this is going to tell us the evaporation temperature or if we're going the other direction, the condensation temperature. So condensation, we're going to mark that there as well. All right, below this graph, I would like you to draw out the different phase changes. You should know all six of these. Hopefully this is mostly review for you. You should know that going from a solid to a liquid is going to be called melting. And when we go from a liquid to a solid, that's freezing. You should also know the temperatures that water um, does these at. So in Fahrenheit, it would be 32 degrees Fahrenheit. In Celsius, this would be zero degrees Celsius. Going from a liquid to a gas is going to be vaporization, and going from a gas back to a liquid is condensation. This for water is going to happen at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or at 100 degrees Celsius. So you should know those temperatures as well. Now during these phase changes, you should know what is going on with the molecules. So when we go from a solid state I can kind of draw in some molecules here showing how those molecules are very compact within that matter, during that state of matter. And then when they go to the liquid state, you can kind of think of it almost as if liquids can flow past each other, and that's basically what the molecules can do. Those also can flow past each other. And then in the gas state, these molecules very freely fly past each other. And so there is a change in how the molecules are acting. Now the two phase changes that may be a little bit less familiar to you would be this one up here, which is sublimation. And that's going to be when we go from a solid directly to a gas. And the time that you're probably the most familiar for this with this is going to be maybe like a stage production where they will use things like dry ice in order to have a smoke kind of effect on the stage. The other one that might be a little less familiar to you is deposition, and that's where we go from a gas straight to a solid. Um, the time that you're most likely to experience this would be maybe on a very large window of your house on a really cold winter day. Sometimes you'll see 
that frost will form on the inside of your window of your house. And this used to actually happen on my parents' patio door where the cold window and the gas water molecules floating in the house would hit that cold window and they would kind of create a frost on that window frame. And so that's going to be called deposition. I always think of that example and think of like depositing ice that may help you a little bit. Okay, so these six phase changes, you should know if you um, go ahead, pause the video and make sure that you've written down what all six of these phase changes are. So there's a couple of things you're going to be working at um, on at your lab tables. Um, you're going to flip over the page that we just did, the phase changes and uh, the uh, graph on. Flip that over. You're going to do the front side of that. Then you're going to be working on this worksheet here with the water cycle. You need to label um, condensation, evaporation, precipitation, groundwater, transpiration, respiration by animals, and water taken up by plants. There on the image right here, there are not enough lines for all of these different things, so you will have to draw in some of the items that I ask you to label right here. Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to answer the questions on the front side of this worksheet as well as doing some definitions. Then you're going to flip it over and you're going to work on the back side as well. After you're finished with the front and back side of this piece of paper, um, you're going to be moving on to the other worksheet that has a crossword puzzle on it. So you can work on that and then the last 10 minutes of class we'll come back together and go over all of the correct answers. Okay, so now that you've had some time to work on these worksheets at your lab tables, I'd like you to go ahead and check your answers. So make sure that the water cycle is labeled like mine is at the top of my page here with condensation um, by both of the clouds. Condensation is actually water droplets as a liquid. So there's tiny little water droplets floating in the air above you. Those are actually what clouds are. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail. Should have precipitation labeled over here in the middle, transpiration over to the left, evaporation over to the right, um, and then the water taken up by plants. I drew in a little animal here for respiration by animals. Number two, you should have said no, it always cycles. In terms of definitions down at the bottom, you should have going from a gas to a liquid, a liquid to a gas, um, condensation down to the ground for precipitation, and then a definition for transpiration is water released um, as gas by plants. So double check all of your work, make sure you've got everything correct here. Alright, so here are the answers to the other side of the worksheet. So the first answer should be true. Number five would be chemical reactions and meteors. Number six would be gas or water vapor. Number seven, transpiration is um, where water um, releases from plants as a gas. How does it get it in the first place? It's taken up from the ground through the roots. And then number eight, water is a waste product of the process of making energy, ATP, which is also known as the process of cellular respiration, so it's a waste product there. If you need to, you can always come back to this video to double check your answers. And here are the answers for the crossword puzzle. So number one down should be energy um, right here, condensation across here, evaporation down at number three, melt down at number five, precipitation down for number four, sublimation down for number six, um, and then across we've got freeze here at number seven, liquid here at number eight, vapor for number nine, solid for number 10, and transpiration across for number 11. So double check all of your answers on the crossword puzzle. All right, go ahead, flip your crossword paper worksheet over to check your answers for the other worksheet. Number one, you should get true. Number two, liquid, solid, and a gas. Number three, energy. Number four, gas. Number five, solid. Number six, liquid. Number seven, vaporization and evaporation. Number eight, melting. Number nine, freezing. 
Number 10, condensation. Number 11, transpiration. Number 12, sublimation. Number 13, precipitation. And number 14, you should have said that the melt water increases, the water runoff increases, and the size of the glacier will decrease. Go ahead to the worksheet where we were working at the beginning of class on the phase changes and double check all of your answers. You should have that the melting point of water is 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius. Boiling would be 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. How do you know? You're looking for the flat spots on the graph because during this point the molecules are in a phase change uh, so they are not changing their temperature at all. Number four you can cross out, you don't need to know. And number five, energy is absorbed as it melts or as the water boils. If we are going the opposite way, then the energy would be released from those molecules. So if I was freezing something, then the energy would be released from those molecules. At the bottom of the worksheet, we need to fill in a chart, so double check all of your answers. Um, for a solid, solids have a definite volume and a definite shape. That means that the molecules are very compact and have very little movement. So in my diagram, I show them vibrating just a little bit, but you can see how they are all very compact here. In terms of a liquid, a liquid has a definite volume and an indefinite shape because it takes the shape of its container. The molecules can flow past each other, which I've shown in my diagram here with them somewhat close together but still able to go past one another. A gas has an indefinite volume and an indefinite shape. These molecules can move and fly freely. So in my diagram here, I have them moving easily past one another.